I'm here at the Adult Entertainment Expo. Sasha Gray could be called the world's first postmodern porn star. She's won every award you can name, or rather I can't name on camera, but she's also been in Oscar-winning director Steven Soderbergh's recent film, The Girlfriend Experience. That's really unique. Not many people can say that. So tell me about that movie. How is this movie a metaphor for the postmodern economy, the service economy, and the state of the world right now? The Girlfriend Experience isn't just a metaphor for our current economy, but it's also a metaphor that everything in life is a transaction. Whether it be monetary or not, you have to give something to get something in return. Tell me about um, your, own, your own experience. Are you crossing over from adult film to mainstream film, or are you moving back and forth? How does this work, and what does this tell us about entertainment? I know most people really like to put a boundary between everything, but personally for myself, I try not to see any lines in between anything I do. I just look at it as a giant canvas that is my art and that is my business. Is this the future of entertainment, kind of where the line between adult and um, mainstream entertainment, is it going to go away, is it going to blur, is it going to be less clear in the future? Well, like I said, there is a lot of people that do see that line, and I think that line will always somewhat be there, um, but that's also because the public wants it to be yeah. there, because adult films are fun, they're taboo, and people want them to be taboo, and in a way that's okay, but I think at the end of the day, it's really about the personalities rather than the industry as a whole that can define who they are as individuals and as businessmen and businesswomen. And you're the perfect person to get a, re a reality check on this. Technology has been really key to film and adult film. VHS and 30 years ago was a huge breakthrough for adult film. The internet has really revolutionized film and adult film. Is 3D technology going to change anything in adult film? Uh, wh what technology might change it? What might its impact be? Obviously, right now, the internet is still huge for yeah. the adult entertainment industry. As far as 3D goes, I personally don't want to see adult films in 3D. I think that's a little too much. Kind of kills so the fantasy. So you are not sold on it? No, not at all. So you think it's a bad idea? It kills the fantasy, you know? Leave it to a fantasy. Um, I think once 3D entertainment becomes easier for the median consumer, yeah. for the average consumer to be able to purchase it and to be able to afford it, then it'll be popular. But okay, right now, yeah. it seems like it's still at the high end of the market where it's a specialty item. And tell me about your latest venture, how it's kind of pushing forward this philosophy you have towards your work. I just launched a new company called Grayscale Entertainment. We produced, executive produced um, a show for G4 TV, which is Sexpo Australia. Yeah. And I'll be doing my own adult films with this company. I'll be directing all of them on my own. I'm putting out two new 12 inches with my band at Telecine in March, one through Deus Records and one through Pendy Sound. And in March, I'll be shooting a horror film. And in November, I'll be shooting an action film called Kayla Crow. So it's That's nonstop for me. And in February, I'll be at Sex Week at Yale every possible genre. So last question, and this is going to be something that any, some people doing anything might be interested in. What's the best piece of advice you ever got about being a professional? You have a great story about this. Well, yes, I do. I have two, actually. Um, my first week in the adult entertainment business, um, the first director I ever worked with came up to me and said, in a very personable way, not in a sleazy or business way, he just came up to me and said, hey, don't burn yourself out. Do everything by your own volition and do it at your own pace. And I already knew that's what I wanted to do, but it was great to have it uh, reaffirmed to me by a man in the business and by, uh, you know, because the business is often looked down upon and vilified. And here I was being respected by my peers and by a legend in the business. And the second piece of um, the best advice I've ever gotten was save 10% of every check you get. That's great advice in any business.